Hello everyone, it's Paige and welcome back to my YouTube channel today. I'm doing a sit down video. Well, <laughs> so I said I wanted to do every last Thursday of the month would be a fitness video, kind of recapping diet, what I've been eating, how I've been feeling, just more of like a check-in. And I, I didn't stick to anything that I wanted to do when it came to my diet. I was traveling a lot and I was visiting family and I've been doing so much that I kind of forgot that I was supposed to be on this diet and working out all the time. And so I pretty much did the opposite of that, but I do have some new life updates and things that I have been doing that have helped my anxiety. So I thought I would share with that. And also just recapping traveling and eating and what I've learned and all of that good stuff. But it's definitely, I'm not on track. <laughs> at all, but I am happy and I'm going to tell you why, so let's just get right into this video. So if you remember in the video where I was talking about why I wanted to get in shape, why I wanted to focus on it, so I was feeling very discouraged by a lot of comments focusing on my body. Since then, I have decided to go to therapy, and so I have been going to therapy now, which has made a very big difference in my life. I realized that, yes, I was upset about those comments, but I was just so overwhelmed with everything that was going in my life, both professionally and personally, that I was focusing on those negative comments, I guess, to get my mind off of everything else that was going on. And I just wasn't in the right headspace. And so I decided that it was definitely time for me to go to therapy. And I think there is still a misconception and a stigma surrounding therapy. I... I'm not going because I am not okay. I guess I am not okay, but I feel like this is such a great step in the right direction. I have only before seen sports psychologists and I've never actually seen a therapist. And it's definitely time to tackle everything that I've been through in my life. And it's just nice to talk to someone. I think when people are like, oh, I'm in therapy, you think that they're crazy or <laughs> going through all this stuff. And honestly, I feel the best that I've ever been now and I've just started therapy and they just give you helpful tools to have you be more successful and handle you know the challenging aspects in your life I always think about it this way where if you pull a muscle or if you hurt yourself do you just let it keep hurting no you're gonna go see a specialist to help you get better and same with like a golf swing if your golf swing is off you go see a trained professional to help you get better and so for me I just was lacking all of these tools to be able to handle a very stressful life that I think a lot of people don't realize how hard it is at times to be in front of a camera or to always get uh, the negativity back and and just the, the constant connection to your phone and always working. I know that being like an influencer is a joke career for a lot of people, but I take it very seriously. And instead of working like a nine to five, like a lot of other people, I am constantly connected to my phone and work never stops for me. I'm always answering <sighs> Emails, thinking of content, curating content, posting, editing, uh, responding to people. It's just constant. And I needed a way to be able to disconnect from that and to have other hobbies. One thing I found in the last time I did this video was when I was journaling. And I sat down and I had no hobbies. Nothing. My whole life revolves around work. And yes, I do work a lot, but you still need those times to disconnect. And I had nothing else in my life, nothing, just work. And so that was a big realization for me and something I was like, okay, like this is not okay. Your whole life cannot just be work. Like you need other things in your life that bring you happiness. And work definitely does bring me happiness. And I like being 
you know, financially stable and I like hitting those new milestones of, you know, new followers or um, whatever it may be, being more creative, I do enjoy that, but I do also need something outside of that. And so that is what I've been trying to slowly work on is finding other things in my life that do bring me happiness outside of just work. So one thing I've really been trying to do is connect with friends and be a better friend and make sure that I'm being more responsive to them and not always talking about myself too. Again, not everyone wants to hear everything about you. So once you kind of put that down and stop thinking about just yourself and what's going on with you, you can open up to more people and hear what they're going through and just gives you more perspective as well. Since I lasted the other video, I was so focused on food and my diet and what my body looked like because of all of the negative comments that I was getting. And since also um, going to therapy, I've realized that I need to be <laughs> happier with myself. And I seek validation from other people. I'm a people pleaser. And that is a definitely a big character flaw of mine. I have realized this for the longest time, but it's hard to fix. And so when you're in an industry like mine where you <laughs> are successful through other people's validation, it's not great for a people pleaser. You know, I base the, my success off of if you like my content or not, and I do have to create content that you guys love and you wanna interact with. And so I'm always in this vicious cycle of, okay, I need to not be a, a people pleaser, I need to not seek validation, yet I'm always trying to create really great content that you guys like. And so I definitely have had to separate those a little bit and realize that yes, like I'm creating content that I like that also you like, but maybe if I try something a little bit different or if I try to um, break out of the mold of that I've always kind of stuck to and you guys maybe don't like it as much, then that's okay because I really like it and I think hopefully eventually you'll really like it if I'm creating content that I'm passionate about. I think that I have been stuck doing the same thing over and over and over again because I've been scared of the reaction maybe that you guys will not like the new types of content or being a little bit more creative. I talked about you know working with points and how I really do enjoy it because I am having to be more creative and kind of push myself outside of my comfort zone which is great but I actually want to start doing that more in my own content. I think I've been again stuck of doing you know the same like types of poses of my golf clubs and that's all great and I think I'll definitely stick to that as well but I've been starting to do something a little bit different now where you know I'm talking more in my content on Instagram for example or playing different holes or doing certain things and you guys actually really like it and so I was so nervous over absolutely nothing and I think that we tend to hold ourselves back because we're so worried of what other people are going to think about something that we end up not doing it and that hurts us because what we end up not doing could actually be something that makes us even more successful and so I'm slowly learning that as well is that it's okay to be a people pleaser as long as it doesn't hold me back. I'm probably going to be trying new things coming up and I think I have with you know the content you'll keep on seeing too. I would say with YouTube I am the most creative when it comes to or less scared of like what people are going to say compared to Instagram and that's probably because it's like my biggest platform and with YouTube I feel like you guys know me so much better on a deeper level that you I'm not as like scared of judgment I don't know it's weird I'm working through it <laughs> but I, I think it's because I, I do feel like a deeper connection with you guys here on YouTube compared to Instagram where you know it's mostly just pictures and short content, short videos compared to here where it's like I've opened up a lot, I've talked about different things, I've done Q and A's, it's just different. And I need to start bringing this, what I like about YouTube over more to Instagram. So that's definitely what I'm going to try to improve on. I keep digressing when I'm trying to talk about fitness and diet because there's so many other things that have been happening in my life and these realizations and epiphanies and I feel like within the last four weeks I have grown so much and a lot of that has 
I've come from therapy and just feeling so much better about myself. But we'll get right into fitness and diet, what I've been doing, and through traveling, how hard it was. So I was in Colorado for a very long time. I had a ton of work events there, and then I stayed for a little bit to hang out with my family, and which was so nice. But through that time, I was trying to eat healthy, but I wasn't obsessed with my diet. And for the first time, I actually didn't feel too guilty about it. Towards the end of it, I did when we got like three uh, ice cream like three nights in a row. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, I was just enjoying being around my family and not worrying about like, okay, if I eat this, then I have to work out this hard. And I started to realize I was becoming so obsessive about it. And it's again, it goes back to like, seeking validation from people online and if they say that my body doesn't look good I want it to look good and it's just pointing out the insecurities and a lot of people say well if you get a thousand really good comments but one bad comment why does it stick with you or why do you respond to those I think it's because that they pick at my biggest insecurity and so I'm already feeling that way about myself and so when someone else says it it validates what I was already feeling and that's why it hurts so much more and so I think when you see these you know um entertainers, athletes, influencers, whoever, with a big with a big platform, I think it all affects us the same way where, you know, if someone picks at an insecurity of yours, it's going to hurt so much more than when people are telling you you're great because you don't believe that. You believe the negative things about yourself. And so I'm really trying to work on that. So when someone says something negative about me, I'm like, okay, are they just saying this to bring me down? Well, yes. <laughs> Is there any validity with what they're saying? Well, no. So I'm going through it like a couple steps now and being like, okay, let's take a step back, think about it. Why are they saying this? Why does it hurt? And then let's move forward. If I really truly feel like I am unhealthy and I need to um, eat better or work out because I'm unhealthy, then that's a reason for me to do it for myself. Or if I am doing this to be healthy or to be my best version of myself, then that's great. And so that's how I'm also trying to think about it now. Instead of like, I'm doing this to prove someone wrong, I'm actually doing this because it's going to help me be happier and healthier. And I think that's a good way to think about things is not doing something because you want to prove someone wrong. Sometimes that is a great motivator, but then once you accomplish that goal, like what, what happens after that? You know, then you lose your motivation because you've already accomplished it. But if your end goal is just to be the best version of yourself and to be ha help happy and healthy, then you can always keep working on that. And so that's what I'm trying to focus in on. And also there's just, you know, certain things that I will always not like about myself and that's okay. Like I will never have a big booty. <laughs> I get so many comments about my body, about my butt, not just being big because that's a big, you know, trend now is to be very um, curvy and have a big butt and that's, that's great. But no matter how hard I lift, how hard I work out, I will never have that because of my genetics. It just is what it is. And people are always like, well, squat. I'm like, I am squatting so much. I'm working my legs so much and there's just nothing I can do about it. The only way I would possibly be able to get that shape or figure, it's by either Photoshop or surgery. My goals have shifted instead of looking good for other people to make me feel good about myself. I'm doing it because I wanna be healthy and happy. And so I can have those cheat days. I can have those times with my family where we're eating pizza at my favorite pizza place and then ice cream and you know, there's a good balance to everything, but you need to not be so hard on yourself. And that is definitely what I'm learning is to not make yourself feel guilty. And everything is fine in moderation and to enjoy life and, you know, to have fun and to not be so hard on yourself. And so that's kind of what I've been trying to do these last four weeks. Fitness and diet during travel. Very difficult. <laughs> it is very difficult to keep your routine when you're traveling and you're not in, like I was saying, your normal routine. It is very hard. So one thing I was really trying to do when I was traveling, especially airports, was find healthy options. So they have healthy options there. So instead of grabbing, you know, gummies or chocolate or wherever it may be, chips, they have healthier options. So you can reach for, you know, I don't know if you, what your diet restrictions are or what you tend to follow, but if you're not, you can do, you know, they have hard boiled eggs and beef jerky and, you know, healthy bars and always grab water, you know, instead of 
doing a soda, grab water. So there's small little things that you can do and, you know, like a trail mix instead of a bag of chips. You know, things like that make such a big difference in the long run and you just feel so much better too. And so if you just make the smarter decision if you're, you know, at a restaurant and they have healthy options at restaurants too when you're traveling. So it's difficult and sometimes it's not fun, but we all know what we should and shouldn't be eating and it's not that hard and there are so many options out there now. And so if you just make the smarter option or the, you pick something that's a little bit healthier and still good, you're going to feel better about yourself. And when it came to and when it came to working out, uh, that was a bit difficult for me. So over those two weeks, I really didn't do much working out. There was a track by my uncle's house that I would go and run and walk and I would take Nico on walks and I would try to get some type of walking in during the day. I also brought my booty band, which is this pink, like pink thick band pink thick band that you put around your legs and I would do all of my exercises at night so I would do my squats my squat walks my step backs um, all of that stuff and then I would just do kind of body weight workouts and I felt good I felt like that was enough for what I was doing I was already exhausted from all of the work that I was doing so I didn't really need a very like big strenuous workout um, but I was able to do all of it within my hotel room so if you just plan ahead and bring either like bands or a mat or whatever you need you can find you know really great workouts on YouTube which you can look through your phone um, there's apps out there you can also do classes if you're I was in Denver so I could have definitely done a ton of classes I always go to transform when I'm there they do really great uh, mega reformer and they do these stair climbing classes which are just absolutely brutal but you can look up different studios in whatever city you're at and also get a class there as well, which I didn't end up doing so, so busy. But again, it takes a little bit more effort, but there are so many options out there for you to actually feel better with your fitness and you can do it again just in your hotel room. You just have to prepare with packing. But um, that's what I did and I felt good. I didn't feel... <sighs> By the end of it, I wanted to get back into my routine here in Arizona, and it's nice to, you know, be able to do that again and work out, but I didn't feel like I was missing out when I was there, too, and so again, this goes back to not being too hard on yourself. Of course, it's more difficult, so give yourself a little more leeway there and not feel guilty because you're missing workouts or whatever it may be. Doing something is better than nothing, so always remember that. Even if it's five minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it may be, if you're doing something, that's better than nothing. And lastly, with journaling, have I kept up with it? I absolutely not. I don't think I'm a journaler. It just does, I dread doing it. I don't wanna dread doing something. So I will not be journaling. I might revisit this at another time, but it just, I just don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. And so I've been trying to find different things. Um, my therapist has been giving me um, different books to read and I really enjoy that. I love learning, but I don't like writing it down and journaling. I, just, I don't know what it is. It's just, again, not for me. Maybe it's just not the right journal. I don't know, but I don't like doing that. <laughs> so not journaling. So if you have any alternatives to journaling, leave a comment down below and let me know what it is because again, it's just not for me. I've tried before multiple times. I can't stick with it and I don't want to do something that I can't stick with and that I don't feel motivated to do. And I know a lot of people are like, well, if you just get in a rhythm, then you're going to like it. But I've really tried and I just don't, it just doesn't work for me. So again, leave me a comment down below on what you think I should do differently. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video, just a little sit down video of what I've been up to, how I've been feeling. I feel really good right now. I feel like I made a lot of positive changes in my life. I feel like I finally have the tools to be able to help me. Thank you guys so much for always watching my videos and supporting me and all the positive comments you guys get me too. I know I talk about all of the negativity and so how that sometimes affects me, but it's not lost on me all of the support and all of the kind comments and and whether it's good or bad for me, I read through every single one of them. I see all of the comments, good and bad, and you guys really are so supportive and so kind, and you do love what I'm doing, which just warms my heart. So again, thank you guys so much for everything that you always do and reaching out with all of your positivity. Just don't forget to leave a comment down below, like this video, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next Thursday.